Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Norville. This edition, Top Stories. The Youth Agri-Enterprise Program reaped a major gain. The head of the Commonwealth Hills, St. Lucia, as a vital member nation. Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Chastney says the OECS as a region is growing in a manner that truly demonstrates inclusion. All that plus the latest in youth development, a spot, and the NTN Nouvelle of the All. The government of St. Lucia continues to secure the future of the island's agriculture sector on many fronts. Among the efforts is the engagement of the youth in the sector. Since the implementation of the Youth Agri-Enterprise Program, major gains have been realized in creating job opportunities for participating youth, increasing the knowledge base in the sector, as well as providing assistance to farmers. More now from Anisia Antoine. To ensure the sustainability and survival of the agricultural sector, the government of St. Lucia, in partnership with the CARICOM Development Fund, invested approximately 4.2 million EC dollars towards a youth agricultural enterprise program. Currently, 80 young St. Lucians are receiving training and support in areas such as the use of appropriate technology and application of best practices. Adlin Nurovic, National Coordinator of the Youth Agri-Enterprise Programme in the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Physical Planning and Natural Resources and Cooperatives, appealed to young people to explore job opportunities in the agricultural sector. We're looking at the creation of young entrepreneurs in agriculture. Mm -hmm. Also, we're looking to develop that kind of mindset where the persons could introduce and embrace new technology mm -hmm. that's, that's used in agriculture to move agriculture forward. Mm -hmm. We had problems with the age of our farmers, that's why we targeted the young persons. The average age of a farmer in St. Lucia and the region mm -hmm. is around 55 to 60 years. Mm -hmm. So we do have an aging population right. okay, among the farmers. Okay. And that, that, that is, that is a, an impediment for introduction of technology and also for, for longevity of anything that, that, that we're planning. The Youth Agri-Enterprise Program has been operational for approximately six years. The program caters to farmers who own or lease private lands. Crown lands are also utilized. River Dory is our most um, diversified site okay. where you have the greenhouses, you have apiculture, that we honey production, mm -hmm. right, bees. You have... Um, all the different enterprises, all the different livestock enterprises that you could think of on that site okay. in Bossage. We have Roso, where we have approximately 28 acres in Roso. We have um, Lacaye, where we have 100 plus acres. We had 100 plus acres. Um, later on, recently, we have decided as a ministry to move most of the land into bananas. So the different activities that we had proposed for that area, we had to move it to private lands and elsewhere. Okay. So. Um, Lakaya is still with us because we still have some participants there, right. but these participants have been um, absorbed by the banana project. Eurovic explained that the SLDB has made terms and conditions of loans for farmers more lenient to encourage growth and youth participation in the farming industry. To date, the Ministry of Agriculture has recorded no defaults on loan payments. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. Meantime, the success of St. Lucian Johanna Dujon in establishing the first indigenous biotech company in the region has been hailed by the head of the Commonwealth, His Royal Highness, Prince of Wales. The strides by Dujon, Prince Charles noted, have helped position St. Lucia as a vital member of the Commonwealth. His Royal Highness, Prince Charles Philip Arthur George, Prince of Wales, on the 17th of March 2019, made an official visit to St. Lucia. The prince was welcomed to the south of the island with a special welcome ceremony, school's rally and reception in his honour. The royal visit coincided with the island's 40th independence anniversary celebrations. The prince during his address highlighted St. Lucia as a vital member of the Commonwealth family, a family that binds together 2.4 billion people across 53 countries on six continents. He noted St. Lucia's accomplishments. The people of St. Lucia have so much of which they can be proud. Today, the name of this land, the only country in the world to bear the name of a woman, is known the world over. 1.2 million international visitors flock to these shores each year. Your sportsmen and women 
and your musicians are making a name for themselves internationally, as are young entrepreneurs such as Johanan Dujon, whom I met recently in London, and whose company, making organic fertilizer from toxic sargassum seaweed, the Caribbean's first indigenous agriculture biotech company, is just one example of St. Lucia's abundant talent and creativity. His Royal Highness Prince Charles added that tackling the threat of climate change and finding ways of mitigating the risk it presents is and must continue to be a top priority for the Commonwealth. Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Chastney congratulated founder of Algas Organics, Johanna Dujon, on winning the Commonwealth Youth Award 2019 in London. He also explained the country's continued battle with climate change. The challenges that we face are many. Crime, unemployment, and the need for improved social services. Among the greatest challenges that we face is the issue of climate change. And we're not in this alone. Climate change does not discriminate whether you are big or small, rich or poor. It affects us all. As a small island developing state, we're often paralyzed because when it comes to building resilience, we're not in control of our own destiny. We're constrained by global bureaucracies. This was most glaring with the rampage of the hurricanes brought to our region just two years ago. And I personally want to thank His Royal Highness for taking the time to visit many of those islands after the hurricane. Despite this, we continue to approach the task with determination, but for us to be successful, we do require intervention. The Prince is set to visit other Caribbean territories, including Barbados, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and Grenada. During the 11-day tour, the Prince will spend a day in each country meeting local politicians and partaking in cultural and environmental events. Saving lives is the key focus of an island-wide roads safety assessment project currently underway here. The IRAP, as it is called, adopts an evidence-based approach to prevent unnecessary road deaths and related suffering here in St. Lucia. More in this report from the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Infrastructure, Ports, Energy and Labor. The Department of Infrastructure has formally launched an island-wide road safety assessment project to determine what interventions are necessary to develop safer roads for all road users across St. Lucia. This project is an intervention of the International Road Assessment Program, IRAP, and aims primarily to save lives. Over the coming weeks, experts will utilize a specially equipped vehicle as part of a robust evidence-based approach to prevent unnecessary deaths and related suffering having solution. In addressing the gathering at the launch, Infrastructure Minister the Honorable Stephen C. King expressed grave concern over the rate of road fatalities and carnage along the nation's roadway. According to the minister, one life lost by vehicular collision or accident is one too many. The infrastructure minister says government is prepared to go beyond the rhetoric and make the investments necessary to ensure the commute of our roads is a lot safer for both motorists and pedestrians. Safer roads are not just a social justice issue. They also make sound business sense too. Dollar for dollar, they provide one of the highest possible public investment returns any country can make. I therefore today say that St. Lucia is proud to welcome this investment and to thank all of those who are involved in the initiative and those who will engage in the application of the program. The Road Safety Assessment Project is being financed by the Government of the United Kingdom through its Department for International Development, DFID. Resident British High Commissioner Mr. Stephen McCready says Britain will remain supportive of St. Lucia's development and is pleased to have offered the financial support to safeguard the lives of citizens and visitors alike. The Caribbean is and will remain an important region for the UK and this project is a tangible demonstration of the UK's commitment to St. Lucia, an important bilateral and Commonwealth partner 
and as I've come to experience over the last two years, a very close friend as well. For the last decade, St. Lucia has lost 169 citizens to fatal crashes, an average of approximately 20 road deaths every year. In addition to losing so many productive citizens, this situation also places a burden on the healthcare sector. In 2016, St. Lucia signed on to the Sustainable Development Goals SDGs to reduce the number of road fatalities and injuries by half come 2020. Chief Engineer in the Department of Infrastructure, Mr. Abba Javati, says the time is opportune for St. Lucia to intensify momentum to reduce road fatalities in line with the SDGs. Road safety is a collective responsibility. It's not just the responsibility of the Ministry of Infrastructure. It's a responsibility of all. It's a responsibility of parents. It is a responsibility of the teachers. It's the responsibility of the to drive various drivers' associations, the driving schools. It's everyone's responsibility. And until we get to that point where we recognize the fact that talk don't save lives, that is action that save lives, we'll not see any improvement. So my appeal to us all is to work together, use that data which is going to come out of that exercise, and put it to good use. So I hope that over the next five years or so, we will see that data being put to use and we'll see a reduction in the number of fatalities and in the number of crashes on our roads. St. Lucia's Island-wide Road Safety Assessment Project, IRAP, was formally launched on Thursday, March 14. From the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Infrastructure, Ports, Energy and Labor, this is Shannon Lebon. Prime Minister, the Honorable Alan Chastney, says the OECS as a region is growing in a manner that truly symbolizes inclusion of all. The comment comes following the accession of Guadeloupe to the organization of the Eastern Caribbean state. Honorable Chastney has revealed that talks have opened with French St. Martin for a similar move. We have full-fledged members who benefit from the Monetary Council and also the Economic Union. Um, we have associate members. Um, some of them are participating in our currency, uh, like Anguilla, but the BVI doesn't. They have their own currency. Um, some of them are part of our economic union and others are not. And so therefore, we're showing the flexibility of a proper functional corporation entity being able to move forward. The Prime Minister says with first Martinique and now Guadeloupe in the OECS fold, numerous advantages can be had for all parties. An immediate benefit, the Prime Minister says, is a more willing heir from Europe, particularly France. In fact, the OECS's direct French connection is being used to discuss EU concerns over the tax regimes of OECS state. We've made special requests of both the President of Martinique as well as the President of Guadeloupe to facilitate a meeting with President Macron. Um, France has been a lead on this harmful taxation regime um, and we think it's critical at this time that as leaders of this region that we do have uh, a one-on-one -on -one meeting with President Macron to discuss this. Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Chastney. This is NTN Nightly coming up the latest happenings in youth and sport with Ryan O'Brien. What's in the food you're eating? Do you really even know? All the chemicals and hormones used to accelerate their growth. All the artificial flavoring, sweeteners and colors too. We consume and we don't spare a thought for the damage that they'll do. The that no, they do. think about the children. Think about the children. How will we save them? Chemicals and GMOs are not the solution. Use organic and join. Excessive agrochemical use, additives, and genetically modified foods are harmful to health and the environment. Join the good food revolution. Grow, buy, and consume organic. A message from Rye St. Lucia and the Ministry of Sustainable Development with funding from the GEF Small Grants Program, UNDP. The good food revolution. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sport.
Welcome once again to your update from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports on the NTN Nightly News. I'm Ryan O'Brien. The 2019 Mass United Insurance 50 Overs Under-19 Schools Cricket Tournament continued on Friday, March 15th with quarter-final action. Advancing into the tournament semi-finals were Corrin Secondary, St. Mary's College, Sir Arthur Lewis Community College and Miku Secondary. At the Balata playing field, Corrin Secondary completed a very comfortable 8 wicket victory over 2018 Mass United Insurance, joint winner Antipo Secondary. Antipo Secondary, after being inserted by Corrin Secondary, bowled out for just 47 in 16.2 overs, with Royce Paul making 22 and Efren Charles 11. Seam bowler Makil Nelson was Corrin Secondary's best bowler, with figures of 4 for 18. Good support came from Kenrick James with 2 for 11, chasing 48 for victory and a berth into the semi-finals of the tournament. Corrin Secondary, led by Captain Lee Solomon, with 34 not out, easily got to the target, finishing on 49 for 2 in 4.5 overs. The wicket taker for Ajipo Secondary was Royce Paul, with 2 for 16. At the Gozile playing field, St. Mary's College, led by a fine all-round performance by West Indies under-15 player and team captain Aki Mogis, registered an 84-run victory over Leonis Comprehensive Secondary. St. Mary's College, batting first in a game reduced to 43 overs aside, dismissed for 201 in 34.4 overs, with Ogis stopped scoring with a well-composed knock of 87, which included 12 fours and 1-6. Other valuable scores came from Des Nigid Harry with 22, Shaquane Prudent 14, and Zidane Arthur 11. Bowling for Leonis Comprehensive Secondary, Jaden Elibok picked up 4 for 58, Keegan Arnold 2 for 38, Udell Preville 2 for 39. Chasing a victory target of 202, Leonis Comprehensive bowl out for 117 in 30.4 overs, with Keegan Arnold top scoring at 48. Denzel Albert 15, Udell Preville 12, and Jaden Elibok 10. The chief destroyer with the ball for St. Mary's College was Aki Mogis, standout figures of five wickets for eight runs with his leg spin. Amadi Fenner bagged three for 34. At the Mindo Phillip Park, 2018 joint champions Arthur Lewis Community College earned themselves a comfortable 117 run victory over Beanfield Comprehensive. Arthur Lewis Community College, batting first in a 42 over side game, made 224 for eight in their allotted overs with Rashad Gaston making 43, Terrell Chico 42, Charles Sipal 30, and Kyla Donis 25. Bowling for Beanfield Comprehensive Secondary, Kaj Roberts picked up 4 for 38, Chad Martial 2 for 45. In response, Beanfield Comprehensive Secondary dismissed for 107 in 31.1 overs, with Jermaine Dugira making 15, Tyrone Theodore 13, and Kaj Roberts 11. The main wicket takers for Sir Arthur Lewis Community College were Simeon Gerson, 3 for 20, Craig Elizier, 3 for 23, and Tyrell Chico, 2 for 14. At the PI playing field, Miko Secondary got the better of Sufre Comprehensive, winning by 8 wickets. Sufre Comprehensive Secondary batting first, dismissed for 99 in 16.2 overs, with Ajay Edward contributing 24 not out, and Nick Jabati, 17. The pick of the bowlers for Miko Secondary, Desherge Henry, with outstanding figures of 7 wickets for 21 runs. Marklin Estefan lent good support with 2 for 24. Set a victory target of 100. Miku Secondary led by Jelan Justin with 17. Finished on 101 for 8 in 28.2 overs. The main wicket takers for Sufre Comprehensive Secondary were Stefan Teofan with 2 for 19 and Nick Jobatis 2 for 25. While following last weekend's completion of the quarterfinals, of the competition, the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports scheduled the semi-finals for Wednesday, March 20th, 2019. The matchup and venue sees St. Mary's College taking on defending champions Sir Arthur Lewis Community College at the Grosley Playing Field and Corrin Secondary plays Miku Secondary at the Wen Playing Field, Monipo. Both matches set to bowl off at 9.30 a.m. Paul Vol Clinic number 2 for the year will be held on Tuesday, April 2nd. This clinic will be held at the Jump Center at Vidbutai Secondary School. A coaster will be departing from Sufra at 11.30 in the morning and will serve students and teachers from the schools in Sufra, Chozelle, P.I., Beanfield, Fearful Comprehensive, Miku, Angers, Clendon Mason, Granivier. After the clinic finishes, 
The course will then return students back to their pickup locations. Northern schools will be expected to make their own way to the jump center. Participating schools are expected to come with at least one female, one male, and one accompanying teacher. And schools are reminded that after a short break from competition, schools volleyball action will be back on court at the Vichy Manipaba Sports Complex on Wednesday. In the last round of matches played Thursday last week, female encounter, St. Joseph's Convent won over Sufre Comprehensive two games to love, 25-19, 25-17. And in a male encounter, Leonhez Comprehensive beat Miku Secondary, also by a two love margin, 28-26, 25-22. That's our update today from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sport. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. Plans announced by Invest St. Lucia ISL to develop a number of residential areas, including approximately 11 acres of land in Bushaw Miku and approximately 5 acres in Boisjoli Denry, are taking shape. According to Chief Executive Officer Roderick Perry, the Bushaw and Boisjoli developments, a part of an overall development plan being conceptualized for lands vested in ISL. 59 lots in Bosho and at least 25 lots in Boajoli will be developed. Lots have been designated mixed use, which is a combination of residential and commercial. The lots range from 4,000 square feet to as large as 12,000 square feet and will be made available to residents of the respective communities at reasonable rates. According to David Daisy, Lands Administrative Manager at ISL, the proposal has been submitted to the Development Control Authority, DCA, for approval. Stay with NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. La main pop, c'est chimée, bon santé. Il est absolument nécessaire pour laver la main si vous voulez tienne bon santé. Quand même, si vous n'avez pas de glos, vous avez fait ces bagages là. Écoutez, lavez les mains souvent et puis vous net avec savon après conditions qui sont si mer vermin. Par exemple, vous n'avez pas laver les mains après vous changer d'ailleurs par servi très vite, vous tuez les gens qui sont blessés et bien malades, après vous tuez les animaux et après vous entamez les ordres. Et si vous n'avez pas de glos, vous avez servi ça au cas où vous avez un sanitizer et bien alcool pour 30 secondes. Lavez les mains souvent. Ça, c'est une manière pour empêcher la maladie. Si vous voulez plus d'informations, priez bureau information santé à numéro 468-3449. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NPN Nouvelle à Quayol. Monsieur Autant Janel, Monsieur Madame, département qui est de responsabilité pour l'information à un gouvernement 7 6 ça c'est GIS, à ce bébé télévision NTN, Caposoto. Nouvelle Aquayol, vous êtes au Primus Hutchinson. Cette fois-ci, vous suivez un bon coup de chapeau de Chris Charles et aussi le Premier ministre honorable Alan Chastney. Il y a une visitation pour cela à l'établissement sport Philippe Marcelin en Vieux-Fort dimanche passé. Chris Charles, qui était à cette fois-ci, pour commencer une visitation pour ces pays comme on là, ça c'est pays à la terre qui ont une relation de culture, valeur économique, la paix et la démocratie. Capacité, bon, j'ai déjà fait la loi, de un pays, égalité, à trois relations, et puis l'anglité. Adressez les quantités de pays qui ressemblent à un vieux fort pour bienvenir. Pour cela, parler particulièrement concernant le progrès de ces affaires des affaires économiques, des affaires académiques, et qu'a dit qu'il paye nous, ni depuis Nobel, et c'est plus haut en coopération de l'Ouest de la Terre. Et féliciter celle-ci à façon qui peut y avoir adressé le changement climat et mentionner principalement les jeunes garçons qui ont fait si tellement progrès en ligne de démarche pour adresser le problème ou à ouet. À la main, nous, Johanna Dujo, qui met à faire compagnie Algas Organic, trouvait grand acceptance à l'Angleterre récemment, quand il y a une jeunesse des pays comme le là qui prend l'initiative là pour adresser le problème de changement climat la terre. Prince Charles, félicité le développement et le progrès là, très haut tout bonnement. Il remarque que ça a placé le pays cette fois-ci à un haut degré parmi ces pays comme le là. Premier ministre Honorable Alain Chastney éclaté l'opinion de Prince Charles, mais il premièrement remercie pour la visitation qu'on a observé le 40e anniversaire de l'indépendance. 
Premier ministre a déclaré que cette récit est très appréciable qui presse là, j'ai placé autant l'intérêt en développement de jeunesse du pays. Là. Plusieurs spectacles de trouver et performer durant la cérémonie, en parmi ces chansons pour qu'il sous cette récit pour venir pour unité, en parmi nous, la chanson Madame Sandra Lord, St. Lucia Unite. Représentatif, plusieurs écoles secondaires et premières de performer aussi chanson pour honorer le 40 anniversaire du pays qui est écrit par M. Ronald Bohingson. Il y a aussi tenu Mama et l'école en parmi ces chanteurs avec les danseuses traditionnelles de cette ici et le groupe danseuses Belle Vivie et Fort. C'est aussi tenu les gars musiciens folkloriques, Eastern Folk Band aussi. Un spectacle là, ou bienvenue, Prince Charles, continue. Et puis les plus meilleurs musiciens pays qui ont amusé plusieurs peuples qui étaient présents pour finir l'activité ça là en Philippe Master Grounds à Vieux dimanche passé. C'est aussi qu'a trouvé à peu près 1 million 600 dollars américains pour commencer un projet de régime qui s'est aussi qu'a produit pour vendre à l'autre pays. Le ministre de la Kine responsabilité pour l'agriculture, Honorable Ezekiel Joseph, a annoncé que le gouvernement et le ministère a trouvé assurance là par le gouvernement Taïwan pour produire à peu près 7 différents denrées, principalement pour vendre à l'autre pays. Selon Honorable Joseph, il y a un plan. En première phase du projet, qui a été pour trois années pour cultiver sept déroulés qui n'ont pas confiance que les cultivateurs qu'ils ont produit à cette ci Cocom, tamadoz, pimandou, choua pomme, moulon, zanana et puis cantalou. D'accord. Nous avons avoir ces produits, ces produits ça et puis nous avons fait un support, land preparation, nous avons porté une technologie et puis et puis nous avons aussi faire provision pour ça enter en de contrat et puis new marketing entity nous avons mis là so ils savent les produits là il y a la place pour ils savent vendre c'est ce que ça apporte mm -hmm. so um, après budget là nous avons commencé à parler plus de projet là et puis um, nous avons ces fameuses là ces extensions officielles là à identifier ces fameuses là nous avons et tuyau parce que nous avons porté new technology en tuyau parce que ça nous ouais that le temps nous a importé à chaque ces dons ça c'est temps est plus difficile pour farmers pour lui de ces dons ça on te l'appelle d'accord right so nous a nous a importé une technologie qui a ça aidé yo pour ça produit ces dons ça en parlant de ça ou à propos comme tu es qui ministre de agriculture car travail pour huit bâtis chimie agricole pour les forêts Edmond et Ambasso en France Jacques Sofia qui a continué tout à présent Selon le rapport, je suis très important parce qu'il a assisté les cultivateurs, ça c'est les femmes, hors de diverses communes, en France et Jacques, et des vaches. Cyclone Thomas a affecté chez Messala, très mauvais, et qu'à présent, il a reçu des grands assistants qui méritaient. Le travail qu'il a fait présentement, qui a facilité pour tous les visiter les forêts et qui a aidé pour entretenir une bonne activité économique pour la commune de France et Jacques. Et que M. Bédam, ça c'est côté nous, on bout de nouvelles nous pour aujourd'hui. Je vous remercie autant pour garder et que je vous une invitation pour je ne puis encore. Si vous conservez la vie, vous pouvez présenter une autre nouvelle à quoi vous avez. nous vous remercie pour vous. Merci à Peel Primus. Here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. Weak, unstable conditions will bring a few showery periods over the northern half of the region during the next 12 to 24 hours. The Atlantic high pressure system will generate moderate easterly winds and generally fair skies across the remainder of the Les Antilles during the forecast period. Tides for Castries Harbor high at 2.42 p.m., low at 8.51 p.m. Tides for Vieux-Fort Bay high at 3.49 p.m., low at 10.18 p.m. The seas slide to moderate with waves 3 to 5 feet or 0.9 to 1.5 meters. The sun will rise Wednesday at 6.08 a.m. That brings us to the end of the NPN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.